Now I'm going to demonstrate the lattice method of multiplication. We take a multiplication problem like 42 times 37. Now the biggest part of the work here is going to be setting up the actual lattice. A lattice, since this is two digits times two digits, I start with a square and I break it into four pieces. So I have two on this side, two on this side. That will allow me to take my 42, line it up in columns, and my 37 over here. The last step with lattice, and this is a very important step, is to draw diagonal lines which connect through each of the angles inside the box. This will look a little different for each type of number, whether I'm dealing with one digit or two digits or three digits. Now I'm ready to start my work. Now I look at each individual box and do each problem separately. So first I look at this box. This box is two times three. Since it's six, it's very important that I not only put a six here, but I think of it as zero six. I have to think of every number as two digits. So when it's a single digit number, I have to make sure I put a zero here to hold that place. Here I have seven times two, 14. Doesn't matter what order we do these in. Three times four, 12. And seven times four, 28. Now all that's left is to bring everything down by adding. Now that's why we have the diagonal lines. That keeps our um, rows together. So the four here just comes down by itself. Here I have six, one, and eight. So I add six plus one plus eight. So I have 15 and I carry the one. Now where we put the carry is kind of up to the students, but I can say one plus two plus two is five. And finally one plus nothing is one. So my final answer is 1,500. And 54. This method is nice because it does take out um, having to hold places with zeros with the traditional way of multiplication. The students do really like this. It's just a matter of being able to set up the actual lattice that takes the time. Next we'll try one with a decimal. Now this problem is just like our last problem. However, now we have 4.2 instead of 42 and 3.7 instead of 37. Now just like when we did partial products, we're going to kind of treat this the same. We kind of want to forget about the decimal points. So one thing we might do is make a magnitude estimate. Um, think about uh, that this is 4 and this is 4, rounding this up, giving us 16. So we know our answer is probably going to be somewhere around 16, somewhere in the tens place value. We can still keep the decimal points in our lattice, however. We just have to set it up properly. So again, we start with a square into four places. My 42, my 37, and my decimal point I'm going to make sure it lines up with one of the lines in the lattice itself. I draw my diagonal lines. And now the problem is going to look identical just until we get to the decimal point. So once, uh, once again, the 0, 6 being very important to make sure they have the 0 there. So everything up to this point is the same. We bring the numbers down, adding down, carrying my 1. So, so far it's the same. However, I remember that 1,554 doesn't make sense for my answer since I know it has to be in the tens. So, what I need to do here is line up the decimal points. So what I do is I think about where do the decimal points come together in this box, which is going to be right here. Now, what we tell the students is just to slide it down. I think if this is a slide and I, they bring the slide right on down here. So this is where their decimal point will end up. So their decimal point will end up here. So I end up with 15.54. I go back and check my estimate, said it was going to be around 16 and in the tens place, therefore 15.54 is a good answer. So this is the last method for multiplication. It can be used for whole numbers and decimals. Um, and we can still use our estimate um, in order to check our answer.